if you, you look at, at the Wallies here, you know, they, I, I, we go, I, every time I talk with them, they've gone to a new place or they're doing something new. They've gone here and there and, you know, that, that kind of a thing. That wasn't the case, you know, a couple years ago. It was not. All right, here we are. Hey, as promised here, we have Tony and Allison <laughs> Wally of Wally Plumbing joining us. Hey, thanks, guys, for, for joining us here on Potty Talk. Well, glad to be here. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Hey, it's good to see you guys. All right, hey, we get started. Hey, tell us a little bit, a little bit about who you guys are and about your business, where you're from, what's going on, that kind of a thing. Give us, give us an introduction. Yeah, so we're Wally Plumbing, and we're in Mobile, Alabama, and we've been in business since 2006. And we are now a full-service residential plumbing company, and we had started as a new construction plumbing company. And that's a long, long story, but we are a residential service company now. Oh, there's a, there's a story here. Listen up, guys, here. Uh, that's fun. We all started that with, with residential service, or, or rather, um, new construction or whatever. So, so that's where you came from. You come from new construction. We do. So that's our, okay. Well, well, that, well, that leads me into, let me ask you then, what was life, okay, like prior to MDP and the Success Academy for, for you guys? Well, you want to tell me well, about the home? A lot of, um, well, just keeping our, trying to keep our head above water, you know, for the most part. Um, we made a little, a little headway towards, you know, towards the, towards the last few years um, before MDP. But uh, a lot of times just trying to keep our heads above water. And uh, as far as being the home life, being the, you know, the homemaker and having the, the little ones, you know, at that age, um, it was kind of lonely to be honest, because he was always, you know, focused on the business or out running around all, all times of day, all times of night. So, uh, that was kind of how it was for me. Very chaotic and very, um, uh, unsystematic. And I just kind of let the day take over. As soon as I woke up, I was always anxious about what might happen when I woke up and I just could never get ahead there was there were time it was a roller coaster pretty much and it was just like yes. always always a varying amount of money in the in the checking account but it always ended with very little yeah we were all, <laughs> all the are at the you know in, at the bottom yeah there very is, mad the other. <laughs> well, well you mentioned so it's new construction so you were doing new construction right and new construction you, you have good you had good accounts you felt like you had good accounts and you know, you were liked and, you know, that kind of a thing. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we had good accounts that we, we were liked. It's just that we were liked because we were available and we got the job done. It's it's not, and we weren't charging enough. And <laughs> it took a long time. It took years to figure that out. And um, when you're, when you're, when you're cheap or when you're affordable, well, let me say this, when you're cheap, Everybody loves you, and yeah. you will be popular, and you will stay very busy. But they don't like you because necessarily you're a great plumber. You may be a great plumber, but they like you because you're cheap. And you're also at their um, kind of handcuffed to them, uh, kind of, uh, you know, at their beck and call. They want you there right when they, they need you, and it's been, you know, Tony's been there, 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 and then one time he doesn't, you know, can't get to the job, and then he's the worst plumber, you know. Yeah, very dependent. Exactly. It becomes de you become dependent on somebody well, else. So, well, well, let's go down that. I know those are negative feelings. <laughs> we don't want to feel oh, that. Very much so. <laughs> but let's bring it back. So, what do you mean by being dependent? What What did that? How did that make you feel, Tony? Like you well, were dependent. I went into business because I felt like I could be a great leader, a great business owner, and I, I'm very much confident in that. But when I started gaining the what I now know as the wrong customers, I just developed more bosses. Like I, I could have very much, I could have very well gone back to to what I to my old boss and just had a great boss and just worked as a plumber. But I didn't know what I was signing up for because I have a I had a plumbing a plumber's mentality trying to run a plumbing business, and that's. A cardinal sin now that I know that you, you you can't you can't open a plumbing business and run it with a plumber's mentality, and that's what I did. And also being dependent, like 
you feel like you can't, the business isn't going to, we can't go on if we don't have these contractors that we're working for. They keep us in business, you know, kind of, we're dependent on them is what we kind of got to thinking. They promised right. all their work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. You get all my work. <laughs> we need right. them. We depend right. on them. So Allison, how did that make you feel, you know, on the home life? I, I know, I know my wife, the lovely Laura, and it, you know, is a security based and we had to work, but in the early days, we were similar with our business. We were doing, you know, general contractors, building homes and that kind of stuff. And I know it when, when you say, Tony, you have plenty of work, you know, you had to work and you, you know, you're doing and you felt the work, you know, we like working with our hands. Right. And so the work gave me, gave me, uh, it fed my ego and it was good <laughs> at it and that kind of thing, but there just wasn't any money. And so not having any money for the home, you know, we got three kids and we need to buy shoes, school well, clothes, all the, co you know, all that kind of stuff. How did you, how did that make you feel? Well, Allison? it was hard um, mentally because he would come home and, you know, one day everything's great. The next day we may have to sell the house. Like, you know, it was just, there was no security there. And that was very scary for me with the two little kids. And then I was so on such a budget. I mean, I remember looking back, it, I think it was a whole entire year where we couldn't even afford to go out to eat, you know, just sat, go out to eat with the kids. It was just, you know, and maybe I'm being a little more dramatic looking back, but it was, I remember those We're moments tired. like we, you know, we just have to, we'll find something at home. You know, it was just constant, um, no, no security. And that is the most important thing, you know, is a stay at home mom for me. Right. When I need so it. And I, yeah, and definitely, you know, we can relate to that, you know, that, that feeling of um, constantly watching the money, which you need to watch the money anyways, even when you have the money, you want to watch the money or it tends to go away. But when you have to watch it so close and, and literally um, counting nickels and dimes, you know, sure. that, that kind of thing. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, we recall those times where we couldn't take the, the you know, the, we can't go out to dinner. You know, even the idea of going, you know, I, I love Taco Bell. Even going to Taco Bell was, exp you know, expensive. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, so you guys were there, but you discovered MDP Wait. and, and you, you became, you know, success Academy members. Um, I mean, what, what, how did that change things for you? And you know, what, what was an aha moment? Well, I started listening to you guys on YouTube and I would listen to you in the car and just listening to you could tell that you've been through all these things whether it be uh the anxiety of trying to make the phone ring or dealing with a difficult employee or uh anything on down the line and one of my major struggles at the time when i was listening to you guys was i just wanted to get my guys myself first and i wanted to trickle down getting my guys off call because call is a really soul sucking thing you know and being available 24 hours a day for a sustained period of time is is very tough and laura said on one of the episodes and i've told you this before that she said you know you guys your plumbing company doesn't have to be available 24 hours a day you just you don't have to be, you can set yourself up to be systemized and you can answer the phone and book calls, but you don't have to physically be available 24 hours a day. And when I heard that, I was, I was like, a, you I like, was old. yeah, so you, you like that thought, but with that we've been so conditioned, well, we got to be available 24 seven, you know, um, it's just, just how it is. Right. So how, how did you deal with that? You know, wow. being a tradesman, and just have been conditioned that way. And that's what, you know, that's what everyone else is doing. For those that are listening, I'm using air quotes. Everyone else is doing that. Um, yeah. How did you, how'd you deal with that? I just going back, that's so funny because I remember specifically him coming home and saying, we're going to take our guys off call. And I was like, there's no way that can't work. What are you talking about? That's crazy. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, you know, I went, at this point I do trust him and know, you know, he's going to make the best decision. So I was like, okay, well, let's, let's go. And now it's like, that was so genius. Like, why didn't we do that years ago? But go ahead. Well, it was just, it was, I didn't believe it at first, but I wanted to, I wanted yeah. to believe it. And right. so I signed up and started going through the success Academy and just 
the math started making sense. You know, you start isolating. What what do we really make on call? What does it cost us to be on call? What is it? What can we do if we just focus on our customers and serve them well during, you know, normal business hours? And it's counterintuitive, but you you have to you have to believe that it's going to work, and you have to be consistent and persevere. And just okay. take the risk to do it because a lot of times people are just scared to, you know, take the risk. Because what we were doing up to that point had gotten us to where we were. I don't want to tell you that we were going out of business because we weren't, but we were just, we didn't have any type of freedom mentally. And it was a constant state of angst. And I didn't want to do that anymore. And um, it, it just, <clears throat> as I progressed through the modules in the Success Academy, at first I had a lot of doubt and I just, you know, I'm sure that's common when you, you just, because faith is required. But as I started, you know, charging a dispatch fee, booking for a day, on and on and on, the, the, the modules themselves started gaining credibility and I, and I stopped doubting everything. And then I just was like, you can see it in the numbers immediately that it works. And so on well, that. How, how did that affect you when you started? How did it affect the business, the, your money, when you started, when you uh, stopped doing on-call and working weekends? And uh, we made more money, and my guys were happier, and the culture at our company was uh, encouraging and uh, motivating, and their family lives were improved because it's just a, it's just a real, a real – burden to bear when you are available that much and able to make a living if your family life struggles and we've seen i mean over the course of you know since doing this our employees like go on vacations that they never had a chance to go on before and you know spend time with their families go pick up kids when they never had the chance like so many great things have happened for them yeah we're proud of that yes Yep. I, yeah. And know that, know that feeling, but just getting there. I love Allison. You mentioned, and, and Tony, you, you know, I, uh, obviously we, we know Tony and Allison now, and, but, you know, and we've actually worked together. In fact, Tony and Allison are, are, are coaches um, yep. for, for the Academy um, that, the, you know, they feel so strongly about this and, and looking to give back. And of course we, we appreciate their service yes. um, and giving back, giving back. Um, that's what masters do. Master plumbers do, you know, they give back. Um, and so I, I love that you share, you know, that the fear, because that's the real thing. And that's what we see hold us, hold us back is the fear. So you were able to step through that fear and it wound up even making you more money. Yeah. So on that, even not working, you know, the fear is I'm losing money. So did you, did you feel that you were losing money or, I mean, you know. I feel like I, I was going to lose money, but yeah. the reality is you don't lose money. And when you, when you focus on the things that you're supposed to do um, and stop guessing at everything and stop just doing things because that's what plumbing companies are supposed to do, mm -hmm. you find that you make data-driven decisions, not emotional decisions. And that is a huge part of the, the Success Academy. It's, it's tried and true. That it's, the numbers don't lie. You know, the data doesn't lie. And with anything, I mean, you have to learn to adapt and, and, and if you want to grow your business, you have to get with the times and find new ways just because it's the old way of doing something. Doesn't mean it's the right way of doing it, you know? Right on. And that's the hard thing. So, so here, what you're hearing from the Wallies, you know, it's like they, they were successful, right? I mean, you're successful. You, and we talk about this just, just guys, just for being, you get into the ring and start your own business. That's, a, you're successful. And then you're successful by just surviving. <laughs> you yeah. know, if you can survive out there, you're well, successful. So we're talking, we talk, you know, if you're, if you're listening, you're, you're, and you have your own, you know, your home service business, you're successful. But you hear it's, it's getting to where you're creating wealth and a quality of life. You know, we talk about wealth and, you know, you know obviously you're a coach in the academy and all that. And, you know, it's all about creating wealth, which is financial wealth, which is what we want to do, which provides security and opportunities for our family, right? But then that time, you know, that, that time wealth is so important. That, that's, the, that's the priceless thing right there is have, being able to have that time. Yes. Um, yeah. oh, I it, love it. It's just the, um, the, the freedom. Like you said, the money is one thing, but if you don't have time to spend it, 
I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you have before yeah. long? Your, your, your kids are grown and gone and, and you, they, yeah. they don't have good memories of you because you weren't around and yeah. What are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's the balance between the, the time and wealth and, you know, bringing them together. And yes. that's what we've really seen happen with us. I just want to touch on really quickly the, the comfort in that you find in the van is is misleading and it's it's not a reality the comfort you keep running back to that you think that you're getting in the van is it's not reality it's just what i'm just speaking from experience it's what i tried to run back to 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 make myself feel more comfortable because and like you're serving a purpose yeah and growing a business is is scary when you don't know but there are yes steps to take tangible actionable steps that you can take they're scary, but this whole community has been through it and is going through it, and it's it, we're here to help each other, you know? Yeah. And you can serve your customer better. You're not going to – the only thing you're going to do is help the customer. You're not going to hurt the customer. Right. But it's, I'm so, so glad you mentioned that, Tony, because um, that is the thing as tradesmen that we deal with. You know, it's the guys. You know, Allison, I know you probably saw this, and I know that the love of Laura saw this on me. Um you know, I, I'm not the most techiest guy. In fact, that was my fear of being out of the van. What, what I do in the office? I'm not an office guy. It killed me to be in the office. <laughs> I, I'm, not a, I'm not an office guy. I'm not a techie guy. I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not, you know, I'm not that guy. Right. I'm, not, I'm the guy that when I'm in the van and I walk on the job site, I own the job site. I'm in control. So I, in that environment, I walk in and, you know, it's, it's like a seen, you know, like a Western, you know, guys, you know, gunslinger walking through a saloon, you know, open the doors and I own this place. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how I felt on the job site. Um, I felt the opposite of that in the, in the office, mm -hmm. uh, at, in the beginning until I, I found I'm enough, I think. Right. And so I'm, I'm glad to hear, you know, I, I know I've heard you, you talk that way before, but, but that's a common thing for us guys to go through and we have to go, we have to make that transition um, to truly create, um, you know, go from owning our jobs, you know, having a tradesman mindset. I love that you, you put it that way, having a tradesman mindset, to actually becoming a business owner, a CEO, all right, and stepping through that. So Yeah, I think that you just have to, when you, when you make that transition from a tradesman to a business owner, you're kind of laid bare and nobody, you know, your armor's taken off because you're so used to being that, that alpha gunslinger on the job site, and then you get, um, into this new realm and you're maybe, maybe there's some, some self-confidence issues there, but however bad it is, that's how bad it is. Whether we know it or not, whether you share it with anybody or not, that's how bad it is. And and when you get down to that reality and you peel those layers back, how bad is it really? Just give it that credit and then let's fix whatever's wrong, you know, because it's going to be that bad whether, whether we all know it or not. You know, and that's that's where a lot of the anxiety comes from, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And I know you've seen a lot of it now. You experience yourself and you've seen a lot of it. And I'm so, the worst. I, I'm, I'm the not, worst. I, I have been more the worst anyway. Yeah, I, I, can, I can relate to that. <laughs> but, but we've survived, right? We've more than survived, we've thrived. Right. And that's the thing, you know. We, we haven't just survived, we thrived. If, if, if you, you look at, at the Wallies here, you know, they I, – I, we go, I, every time I talk with them, they've gone to a new place or they're doing something new. They've gone here and there and, you know, that, that kind of a thing. That wasn't the case, you know, a couple of years ago. It was not. But we, you know, we know what our why is and, and our kids know. And, you know, that's, that's fundamental, knowing why you're doing what you're doing. Because like you said a, a million times, you, it's not a matter of whether you're going to run into problems. You, you you can't have that mindset. You will run into problems and mm. you just have to have a strong enough reason. And we call that our why you have to have a reason to keep going because it's super important. That's why it's at the very beginning of, of what we offer. Yep. Right on. Well, how long, how long did it take you guys, you know, to, to kind of turn the ship? So you went, you went from new construction He's to service, I mean, pretty much all, all service. You know, all service. And, and so give us a, give us a little bit of a, you know, you know, a capsule or whatever, of just how, how long did it take you to, to turn that ship and to do that? And when you started and to, to really where you felt, um, you know, there was extra money in the bank. 
I think it started immediately, but it, there was a there was a transformation process that it really took us about a year to be thriving. But I will tell you that we followed every single thing in the in the module almost religiously. I, I fixate on things. That's a strength for me and a weakness. And when I when I devote myself to something, it's it's it is really a weakness hey, sometimes. Up. But it, it is a, it is a thing too. So. But to become a multi-million dollar multi-truck operation, that whole process took about a year. Um, and But we started seeing things immediately from the time we started uh, implementing a, a dispatch fee or evaluation fee. Um, but along the way there, there's those little middle obstacles you have to get over. Like, I don't know if my customers are going to pay a dispatch fee. Of course they are. The good ones, they, they expect... You, you know, I could go on and on about that. Yeah. But, yeah. If I did get. That's, that's been there and done that. You know, that, that's why, uh, you know, Tony's a coach, uh, you know, in, in the academy. And, um, and so here, I mean, he's great. He's been there, done that, you know, years of experience, gets it, gets the emotion. I mean, that's, that's the thing. And I know you've, you, you believe this too, you know, what we teach in the academy. You know, it's, it's t- to be successful, it's 20% of doing the systems, understanding the systems, the right systems, the right equations, the right KPIs, you know, those kinds of things. But it's 80%, in my opinion, you know, head. Where's your head at and how, how you handle these things and the transition of going from being on the job to, you know, running the business. Absolutely. You know, would you agree with that? Couldn't agree more. Yeah. I remember yeah. this is a very short story, but it's very true. For a long time, I would still... Like I got out of the truck and I would go to the office and I would be dressed in my technician's outfit because I felt so guilty for, for dressing mm-hmm. like the CEO of my company. I felt like I was leaving my my guys behind and, and it was really tough. And then one day I just, you know, because I was in the, in the Success Academy, I stopped dressing like that. I started dressing like somebody that's successful because your your team needs to see that. There's a lot. There's a lot there. We could go on. That's all. That could be a few classes just just right there. But how did how did that really change? So doing that because there's a lot there in that emotion. We all go through that, and I and I see that a lot. In fact, that holds a lot of guys back. That guilt. Yeah. We were so conditioned. What got us to take care of our families and and even just our egos is built up that I'm working with these guys and I'm on the job and that's that's where things are at. So it's it's a hard thing to get over. How, how, when you got over that, you know, how did that truly affect your relationship, you know, with your teams, you know, your company and business? Well, it's it's a that's just one thing in the building block process of of growing into a thriving company. But it it, did, it, it was a the the guilt lasted for maybe no more than a week, and then all of a sudden it was just that's just who I was, and now my 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 general manager who was a technician now dresses. Um, differently than the technicians, and they don't they they are secure with that. Whereas when I first started this this process, I thought, man, they're gonna think, who do you think you are? You're you're just one of us. You're trying to be some big shot. All that stuff, and that's what that's that just speaks to how you said eighty percent of it is mental. I mean, it's it's it is it's mental. Yeah, I got. I can't help it. I do a little coaching here and share a story. Since you share a story, Tony, I'm going to share this quick story here. And how I, how I learned this, you know, is, you know, we talk about, you know, we learn most from our, our mistakes, right, and our failures. Oh. And I have no trouble saying, you know, um, I have what, what makes us valuable is I can tell you I've made every mistake. <laughs> I've had the failures. You well, that's know? how we feel it's too. Great company. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, we, we learn from those. And so the Success Academy is meant to be a shortcut so you don't have to make the same failures, you know, yes. and spend the time and money, you know. Sure. Um, but uh, it was on, in the early days, and I, I had a team, and I, and I got one of the best guys in town I was able to track at a point. I was finally able to track really one of the best plumbers in town. And uh, was working, and I still dressed like the guys. Okay, now we had we started having systems in place. So we got the systems in place. That's what you know we were developing. But I was still holding on. When you told me when you say you were still holding on, I did the same thing. I just felt guilty. I'm That's glad refreshing you, I, to hear. I, I felt I felt guilty. I felt um, that I didn't want to feel like I was better. Didn't want the guys to think I was better than than them. It wasn't about that. But 
I got this guy, and he's one of the best in, plumbers in town. I finally had him on my team, and uh, he wound up quitting. And when I asked why he quit, he said, because you, you, don't, dress like a, you don't dress like a plumbing business owner. Yeah. That was his reason for quitting. He made good money. He made good, but he felt more secure going to the, the other company where the owner dressed like an owner and acted like an owner. And that's when it hit me. I'm making these guys feel uncomfortable. They don't trust that they're going to have a job or that the money's being done with if I'm, if I'm dressing like them and looking like them. Yep. So, and it's kind of intuitive at first, but that, yeah, it is. But that was a smack upside my head. That, I, I learned, learned that, and that's when I stopped dressing you know, like, a, like a tech, and that's in the, in the academy. We talk a lot about that, but that's where that ca- came from. I've never told anyone that story. So, well, I'm glad yeah. we're the first to hear it because it there makes it is. good to you. Know? Right. There, there it is. I've done all the stupid oh, stuff, man. So as we go, um, you know, I, I know your time's valuable here, and, and we're going to wrap things up here. Um, you know, Allison, what's, um, what is something, you know, you've watched Tony, and you've been involved in this. What is something that you could you know, share, you know, a nugget of gold or, you know, a piece of advice for someone who's listening that is, you know, where you guys once were, where Tony once was, and wants to be now where, you know, you and Tony are now? Well, I mean, I think it's, if I could go back in time, I would have MDP way sooner in our <laughs> business <laughs> endeavors okay. here. Um, you know, I just, I hope everybody can, um, can just listen to us and, and know that we've actually had su- such success and it's changed our lives and you just have to, like I always say, trust the process. You have to, you know, do, do each thing that's laid out for you. And if you do that, you know, we did it in a year and it's life changing. We can't, you know, we can go on trips. We just got back last week. We're going, um, next week on, for another week, you know, just the time that we have and the, what we get to do and spend with our families, you know, it goes by so fast. So being able to make the memories together and travel and, you know, find out what you want to do and make that goal and you can accomplish it way faster. If you, you know, get on the system and it's been so great for us. So I'm, I'm ple- so pleased with it. Good. Great. I appreciate that. What about you, Tony? Well, I just want to echo what she said. If I would have had somebody to come alongside me and say, Hey, instead of maybe doing this, let's, let's go this route. Let's think about this. Because like I said, the, the plumbing, the, the technician mentality is a real thing. And, and you, it just doesn't lend itself to, to running a successful plumbing company. So, um, there's no shame in, in asking for help. It's not very common for uh, blue collar workers to ask for some kind of business coaching, but I, I just really believe in it. And I just think that, and I've said this before, but I think it really holds true. Like you as a business owner got yourself to wherever you are and, and you should be proud of that. And if you don't have the freedom to do whatever it is, uh, to spend time with family, to go on vacations, to whatever it is, if you don't have that freedom, this is a system that will create that freedom for you and you will be happier. Your family will be happier. And if that's what you're looking for, there are actionable steps that we can show you and this whole community will, will rally around you and help you. And I can say that firsthand. Well said, man. Well said. Appreciate Thank that. You. All right, guys. And I appreciate you guys taking the time uh, Absolutely. to, to be here on potty. Talk. Yeah. All right. In, in between your life here, your trips, I think you got, uh, right. you're taking kids to camp today. You're taking care of business. All right. <laughs> life is busy and fun. Absolutely. All right. Good for you. Yeah. All right, guys. Again, hey, I appreciate you guys. Look forward to uh, seeing you and speaking with you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Take care.